confirmed to attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hearing sight and speech. Divine hearing, divine sight and divine speech. Here we make a distinction now. Say the previous three attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala power, will, life and knowledge. We say we can prove these textually, scripturally from Quran, it's there in the Quran. We can also prove them rationally. We could rationally prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must have life, must, must have power, must have will, and he must have knowledge. With these last three, we do not we only rely on scriptural proof. We say what's the dalil? What's the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he hears sees and speaks see because it says so in the Quran we do not use rational proofs here why? because it said the asa, the primary here is that had it not been for the fact that these had come in the Quran we would have negated it completely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking and we can't accept that because it says لم يكن له كفر أحد there's nothing like him speech is a completely human attribute if you want to say that use a rational the reverse proof saying that um, if he doesn't speak, therefore he's dumb. And that's a deficiency with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he doesn't hear, therefore he's deaf, which is a deficiency. If he doesn't see, therefore he's blind, which is a deficiency. What's the problem now with that? Where's the deficiency in human beings? In human beings. You could have a God that doesn't speak. You could have a God that doesn't speak. You can have a God that doesn't hear. It's not a deficiency with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why, why, why would we initially negate that? Because of the complete human resemblance. Because what, what you could start going down the path and saying that, that God Almighty must walk, because if he doesn't, he's disabled. God Almighty must be able to fly, because if he doesn't, he's stationary. And you start now opening doors. That's why, like we said, Ibn Hazm, the, the Wahiri scholar, the rational scholar, and he made a significant mistake in Aqeel, and the Ayyam of Aqeel pointed this out. He said, rationally, it's possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a child, rationally, not scripturally. They know he said kufr because he, did, he didn't say it was actually, actually happened. He said, because not having a child is a deficiency. He said, it's a human deficiency, not a divine deficiency. So, what's the problem here? He said, why do we confirm that he hears and sees and speaks? Because he says so in the Quran. Not because of rational basis. Rationally would have negated these, just as we negated all the rest. So rationally it's impossible for Allah to have a child. Rationally it's impossible for Allah to walk, to have legs. No, because, because you know, to walk, so you negate all of these things. No. Why? Because he said, the clear resemblance with human beings. So the point you were making, these three as well, we would have negated had it not been that it comes in the Quran. So what's our dalil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks? Because he said he spoke to Musa and so. What's our delusion that he hears? Because he says, and asma wa I hear and I see. No. But then, as we do with other attributes, we negate any resemblance or comparison to human hearing, sight, and speech, and that's what we're going to look at. So these last three are the affirmative attributes are different to the first four. The first four we can prove rationally as well as scripturally. The last three we only prove them scripturally. We don't prove them rationally. Because if you do now, you open a dangerous door where you can start adding attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are completely inappropriate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We work on a principle in Aqeedah that we do not compare that which is in the unseen realm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the seen realm. We do not compare them. We mentioned before, some people say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two eyes. So it doesn't say that in the Quran or in the Sunnah. Nowhere in the Quran or in the Sunnah they say he has two eyes. It gives in the single, it gives it in the plural. They'll say because the Antichrist has got one eye. This is the argument that's used. Uh, and Allah subhanahu says, وَرَبُّكَ لَيْسَ بِعَعْوَى And your Lord is not one eye. So he must be two eyed. You say he must be three eyed, four eyed, five eyed. The opposite one is not necessarily two. The opposite of one is not two. No. One, the opposite of one is everything other than one. So now you're saying, one eye, he must be two eyed because he said, What have you done? You've, you've defined the lust power based upon the Antichrist. You've used that as a measure now. That's impossible. Now, ask you any delir in the Quran Sunnah where he said that Allah has two eyes. It doesn't say that anyway. You can't say that. They will say that Allah has a left hand. Why? He doesn't say that in Quran Sunnah because he says he has a right hand. He said, Yo, we're not with Sema. And it says, Be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fold up the heavens and the earth with his right. 
أهل السنة والجماعة said we can interpret that Yameen means power, power with his power. We can interpret that. But now you're saying that's literally right hand, okay, which necessitates a left hand. Where's the left hand coming to the discussion? Why have you introduced the left hand? <coughs> because anything that has a right hand is left. That's our existence, not divine existence. You do not confirm anything with Allah subhanahu unless he's confirmed it yourself. He did not say a left hand. So we, if you want to say, no, um, we, we'll, we'll say, we, we hold it as it is, we won't delve into it. Don't add a left hand into it then. Because now you've looked at it from a human perspective. So that's, that's the dangerous door that starts opening up now. You start creating attributes to Allah subhanahu which are impossible for him, which are impossible because of similarity to creation. Are you hearing it? Hearing this side, any, any question on, on what we just mentioned there? Remember the asr within Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah? Allah subhanahu is distinct to creation. Remember, that's the principle we, we begin with. He does not resemble creation in any sense whatsoever. And we begin by negating any resemblance. We begin by negating any resemblance. The only point we will accept is where He subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. And even then, we'll still negate resemblance. We'll accept it. But not in the literal sense whereby it, it, it confirms resemblance. We have to negate it because of the ayat that we mentioned. There's nothing like him, there's nothing comparable to him, and so on. No question? There's no question at the end as well. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Unlike human, unlike human speech and unlike human hearing and unlike human sight. I'm going to touch upon what, the, what that negation is. Um, because there's some of the extreme Hanabila, some of the extreme Hanbalis who went astray in Aqidah who started, who start, like for example, and it's a common book and I'll mention it because people should be careful there's a book called Explanation of the Creed by Imam al-Babahari that's a, a dangerous book to be, to be reading that's a dangerous book in Aqidah in his time, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah stood against him clearly he was a contemporary of the great Imam Abu al-Hasan al-Sha'ari the great Imam al matari they stood against him clearly and he introduced a lot of such comparisons to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such amongst them, and it's become a widespread book that people, people accept. That's a dangerous book in Aqidah to be taken from. Um, some of them started saying, if Allah kind of speaks, it means that there must be tongue, there must be teeth, there must be vocal cords and so on. So you compare them to a human being. That, all that kind of thing we negate. The mechanisms of hearing we negate. We negate the mechanism of hearing. There's no resemblance whatsoever. We have to negate that. The mechanism of sight we negate. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we'll discuss that in a moment. Now that's the danger. Some of the extreme Hanbalis, like Imam al Bahari, they fell into that trap where they started giving resemblance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he mentions these attributes. We have to negate any resemblance with human beings. No. Sorry. Hearing is a first, we say it is an ex existing eternal attribute that resides in his essence by which he is aware of all existing man matters in a manner. I want to just hear, just to highlight a key point, if you go back to point four, knowledge, just reading the definition, just a line, one line definition, because inshallah you're going to have an exam at the end, so you need to know the definitions, right? You're all going to have an exam at the end, so we need to know all these definitions. <laughs> Don't disappear on the last week, we'd have an exam at the very end, not just a pastime, come and just pretend we understand stuff, so to absorb it all. Definition of knowledge. An ex existing eternal attribute that resides in the essence by which matters, all matters are created to him. Definition of hearing on page 19 is an existing eternal attribute that resides in the essence by which he is aware of all existing matters. Definition of sight, page 20, an existing eternal attribute that resides in the essence by which he is aware of all existing matters. No difference whatsoever. There's no, it says that with all three of them, knowledge, sight and hearing by which he is aware of all matter, existing matters. And then with hearing it said in a manner different to knowledge. With sight, it said in a manner different to knowledge and hearing. What's the difference? We don't know. We don't know. We say Allah subhanahu wa hears, and by that hearing, He's aware of all. He's aware of all existing matters. What do we negate? Do we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, and in order for us, no, you must have a mind. So therefore, Allah subhanahu has a mind. Like to refer to the mind of God Almighty, to understand the mind of God Almighty, you can't say that. You cannot say that. Because Allah Subhanahu does not have a mind. Mind is human being. So how does how does Allah Subhanahu have that knowledge? Allah that's, that's his knowledge to know about. What's the mechanism by which he hears? It's definitely not this. We have to negate any resemblance to human beings. What's the mechanism by which he hears? What's the mechanism by which he sees? 
It's definitely not that. We have to negate that completely. But the end result is the same. Just as a human being, you, 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 you process information in your, in your mind, you know something. The ear is a channel whereby information comes, you process it, you know something. Eye is a channel, you process it, you know something. You see something, you know something. The end conclusion is exactly the same. So likewise with Allah, he's aware through knowledge, through sight, and through hearing. What's the difference? We don't know.